everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock 2 Studio and today I'm sharing with you my travel journal that I created for my trip to Ireland and Scotland, which I'm already on as you see this video. Um, I made my travel journal and a small kit of things to take with me because I wanted to have a record of things. I wanted to be able to make some sketches. I wanted to be able to write down some things, maybe paste in some things um, so that I could remember what I did on my trip. And I know that it's going to be a fast paced trip and I may um, forget things and so I wanted to write down all my my inspirations and make some drawings and little things. So I started out with a custom keeper. I think this is the smallest size that there is. Um, it's made out of recycled vinyl and it's from the Buy Shannon Green Etsy store which I will link in the description box below. She gets billboards, you know those big billboards that you drive by on the freeway. She does something to them, not sure what. Then she um, cuts them down and makes them into stuff. And she's got all kinds of little products that you can buy. And this is one of them. So I wanted to decorate it. I started out with some gesso. I'm not sure that the layer of gesso was necessary. Um, I've, I've never done this before, so I wasn't sure um, what I would need to do to the vinyl to prepare it. But I thought, you know, it can't hurt going with a layer of gesso but it, I ended up collaging the entire thing so probably could have just went straight to the collage. So I have some different gel printed papers here. Um, the ones that I'm using for covering the front and back are uh, printer or copy paper weight paper and then I have some other various papers that I collage on later but the first thing that I did was to cover the front and I made a horizon line. I knew what I was going to make on here. The thing that I really want to see when I go to Ireland and Scotland is the ruins. I want to see the castles. I want to see the dolmen stones. I want to see the standing stones. I want to see all that type of stuff that's so much older than my country. Um, you know, living in the United States, we don't think about it, but and we do have ruins here. I'm not saying we don't. We've got Indian ruins here. I'm very fascinated with the cliff dwellings that um, are around where I live. But we don't have castles. There's no castles. Or if there is, I haven't seen one. And we don't have standing stones. We don't have things like that. Um, and that's the type of stuff that I'm interested in. I love that old, old, ancient, um, you know, past religions, whatever stuff. So one of the main things I'm going to see is is a castle that one of my ancient ancestors built. Same name so it must be an ancestor of mine. But um, so I covered the whole thing. I covered the front first. Then here I am uh, I don't know and I folded the edges around to the back side. Then I poked the holes back through. I don't want to lose the holes because I know I need to restring this. Uh, Shannon includes a instruction thing so that you can pull all the elastics off, decorate the cover, and then put the elastics back on. And it's very clear instruction. She did a great job. I didn't have any problem putting it back together. But um, then I used this uh, other piece of gel print to cover the insides. And I want to make sure that every edge is covered and that there's plenty of glue on there. I'm using a uh, Liquitex gel matte medium and I want you know I'm putting little pieces on the edge and whatever to make sure that everything's covered up that all the vinyl is covered up and so I'm just kind of messing around with that using that same gel print um, on the inside and doing a few little pieces on the edge then I have to give everything a dry and in the middle of this project my heat tool died yeah, that's what happened. It died. Now I don't have a heat tool. <laughs> I ordered another one. <laughs> I tried to fix it. Then I couldn't fix it, so I ordered another one, but hopefully it'll be here. I mean, I know it's going to be here soon. Um, but, so I had to, like, take long drying times, which I did not have time for that. But the thing that I wanted to do next was to put some glaze on, and I... I put quinacridone gold on the inside to kind of, you know, 
because I was tearing the paper, sometimes there's some little white edges and I didn't want the white edges. I wanted to completely cover everything with color. So I did the quinacra dome gold um, mixed with glazing medium on the inside. Then on the outside, I used Payne's gray at the top and Viridian green at the bottom, just using, using the DecoArt Media Fluid paints mixed with glazing medium, which makes it more translucent. Kind of tames everything down, uh, makes everything blend together a little bit better. So then I set that aside to dry and then came back and I'm doing some more, I'm doing some paper painting on the front. And I want to make a dolmen stone on the very front, which um, I think I will be able to see something like that in Ireland. I know there is at least one famous one because I saw pictures. So um, that would be a couple vertical standing stones and then a capstone over the top. I have no idea how they get those heavy, heavy stones on top there without um, machinery, but they did. And that's one of the things that fascinates me. Um, the ancient technology that we don't even know, you know, how they did it. Other than maybe sheer manpower. Don't know. But I'm kind of lightening the middle section of the center. Um, <laughs> middle and center, that's the same thing. I'm really tired, people. Um, <laughs> lightening it up in the section that is going to be behind the stone and then kind of adding some more pattern and color to the grassy area. Um, the picture that I saw, the stone was out in the middle of the field. I don't know where it's at. I don't know what it's doing out there, but um, it had gra green grass around it. So I'm kind of giving that that grassy hilly um, area in front using some different colors of green and these are scraps gel print scraps and um, they're I have all my scraps sorted by color in little plastic boxes <clears throat> so I call them color boxes so something from my blue something from my green then I'm pulling out some browns and grays and neutral tones to make the stone <clears throat> and oh excuse me my throat is like really frogging up not sure exactly what I'm doing here. I'm tearing paper. I didn't do any paper cutting or drawing or anything like that on this. I did it purely by tearing paper, <clears throat> which is probably the purest form of paper painting is um, doing it with torn paper. So I start with the shadow in between two of the column stones. Then I add the column stones and then there's some more shadow on the inside. Um, so I'm trying to, I'm looking at a picture while I'm doing this, by the way, it's a, just a Google picture of a, um, some, some dolmen in Ireland, I think, I'm not even sure. I just did a search <coughs> for an image and this is not a copyright violation because I'm not using the photo. I'm just using it to look at and, and I can't even duplicate it. In fact, it turns out quite different. I'm just getting an idea of what it might look like, <laughs> um, but I don't. I don't think that you could look at this and say, "Hey, that's the blah 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 dolmen and blah 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 whatever." You know what I'm saying? Um, I just used it that photo for inspiration. So I'm adding some darker stone and then um, some shadows and just trying to get this thing to look look like something it kind of looks like at this point a copse of trees or something or maybe some really giant mushrooms I'm not sure <laughs> I end up adding a little bit more to it later that kind of um, fixes it up a little bit at the moment I don't think it looks like much but then I put some other shapes um, undefined maybe it's um, leftovers of a stone fence or something behind just um, to give it that kind of to give a foreground and uh, you know a faded away background then I decided I'm going to do a little bit of stenciling with this Seth Apter stencil um, because it has the words travel and journey 
and it's the same stencil that the print on the inside was done with. The gel print on the inside was the same, the same stencil. So put that on there, decided to use a little bit of that Payne's Gray around the edges just to sponge it around the edges and give it a frame. Um, also maybe cover a little bit more of the edges. I think the edges are fairly well covered because I did fold the paper to the inside and then, you know, glue all that down. But, you know, it just seems more finished to me. So then I decided I wanted to start working on my shadows. And I start with this, this blue and it is totally not the right thing. It looks terrible, terrible, especially when I do that right there. Oh, that's terrible. And then I realized that, um, that white piece there shouldn't be there. Uh, I'm not sure why it's there. I don't know. I put it on there, obviously, but I don't know why. I thought that there was this big highlight right there. Um, so I get some other paper. Um, this is, is black paper with some metallic print on it because I thought it looked kind of cool. And I put that onto the capstone in a couple places. And then it looks better now. Um, it looks more like there's a stone on top of some stones, I think. Then <clears throat> I get out like a slate gray colored um, Fabric-Castell Pit Artist Brush Pin. And I start doing my shadows with that. And that's a lot better, the gray. I don't know what I was thinking with the blue. I, I thought I was going to blend it into the sky. But yeah, didn't work. <laughs> So then I just do all the shadows. Now this is a, um, the pit pen is a India ink. And because this whole thing has been sealed with medium, it's a non-porous surface at this point. So I can take a couple seconds to blend my shadows out with my finger as I'm going. Of course, this is speeded up four times fast. And so it's, it's not quite as fast as it looks like. <laughs> If you slowed it down a little bit, you would see that it's it's a, a little bit slower than that. So then I get out my white Posca pen, which is acrylic paint in a pen form. <clears throat> and I add some highlights. Um, the way the sun is shining, it's shining on the edge of the capstone. <clears throat> and there's a big crack, crack in the middle of the stone, kind of a gouge out of it. And then there's edges on the front. So... I needed to have a little bit of highlight on there to kind of make it look like that. Then I had flooded my stencil down here at the bottom and so I needed to kind of clean that up so I just decided to put white around all my letters and um, that I just over I should have used a uh, heavy body paint instead of that fluid acrylic because the fluid acrylic wants to seep under the stencil. It's not a good stenciling choice. <laughs> I know that, but that's what it was on my desk. So. so I'm pretty happy with that. I decide that I need to add one more little arrow. Um, you know, go this way, go that way. Road less traveled, road, road more traveled. I wanted one more arrow. So I put that on, added some little uh, starry splatters by just flicking my Posca pin on there. And then I added a gold moon using this strumpet stencils stencil of moon cycles. And that's pretty much the cover finished. Um, decide to put it back together. So there's the instructions that come from the by Shannon Green um, store to put the elastics back in. So I did that and I, I am having a little bit of trouble with the paper splitting on the spine and it continues to do that. I probably did not let it dry enough, um, but the, the paper seems to be getting a big strain when I fold the vinyl over, I guess, because the vinyl is a little bit stretchy and I'm not really sure how to fix that. So I'll probably just, I mean, I'll just live with it. It doesn't look terrible, but there, there is a little bit of a crack on the spine of the book where the, there is too much pressure on the paper. So lacing this back up, um, when it's all laced, it has three straps to put signatures in. 
So I'm going to be making my signatures out of watercolor paper. 140 pound cold press is what I have. So that's what I'm going to be making it out of. I had a little bit of trouble making a square knot. <laughs> I know how to make a square knot. I don't know why I couldn't get it right. But it took me a second to get this knot tied for some reason. So as you can see, there's three sections um, to put your signatures on. There's, there's really is one more, but they're both, they're so close together that I don't think, I think you need to have just three signatures. So I cut the paper down to four and a half. The book is five inches tall, so four and a half fits inside of it. And then um, I am folding them and then tucking them into each other so that I can tear the edge and make that signature all the same when it's all folded together. When, when you cut the paper, because this is a heavyweight paper, the edges don't all line up. So I wanted to have that kind of deckle edge on it. So I just tore all the papers. And then um, this is an Altoids tin and I'm using some gouache, which is not acrylic gouache. It's, it's the kind that reactivates with water to make myself a little palette for colors. And the colors I put in there, I can blend any of the, I can blend any other color by mixing those together. So I just put the um, dots of paint in there, let them dry inside there. And then that's a little color palette for me to take with me inside an Altoids tin. And then I have some other stuff in this little zipper bag that has cactuses on it that I got a couple years ago from the uh, um, Creativations. Oh, here I was just testing the colors on the uh, scrap of the watercolor paper. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and are interested in traveling and figuring out what I have in my travel kit. Um, if you did, please give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment or question below, subscribe if you haven't already, turn on your notification if you want to know when I'm having a new bit video coming out, and of course, share if you want to. So here's my finished book that I'll be taking, and then here's my little art travel kit. I have a white Posca pen, a water brush, two illustration pens, a um, drawing pen, my Stabilo All, a blending stump, a mini mister, an eraser, a small ruler, and my little palette. I'm also going to put a glue stick in there. So that's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.